evening and welcome to another algorithmic approach in internal medicine. It's Dr. Ryan here. What a pleasure to have you joining me once again. I hope you're all well and safe. A uh, special thank you to those who have watched my videos and liked and subscribed and shared. I pray God bless you. Right tonight we're addressing the final topic under hematological sections in internal medicine and that is platelet disorders. So platelets, as we know, are produced in the bone marrow and destroyed in the reticular endothelial system after circulating for about nine days. Platelets are important for maintaining the integrity of the vascular system and for achieving primary hemostasis. Clinical manifestations of platelet disorders include easy bruising, excessive bleeding, and particular or purpuric rash. Bleeding time and modern platelet analyzers may be helpful in identifying platelet disorders. Now, looking at the two arms of our algorithm, on the left we have qualitative platelet disorders, on the right quantitative platelet disorders. And this, from a conceptual perspective, is a nice way to break it down. Qualitative platelet disorders can occur as a result of impaired platelet adhesion, impaired platelet secretion, or impaired platelet aggregation. Thrombocytopenia as well, which is quantitative platelet disorder, now can occur as a result of decreased production or increased platelet destruction. So you think of it as a production or a destruction problem. The immature platelet fraction may be helpful in determining whether thrombocytopenia is related to decreased platelet production, in which case we have an immature platelet fraction which is low or normal or an increased destruction uh, in that the immature platelet fraction is elevated. So let's break this down. Qualitative platelet disorders has uh, to entail either one of the following processes. We talk about adhesion, secretion, and aggregation problems. So under adhesive issues, we could be looking at either von Willebrand disease or bernard soulier syndrome, which is a genetic problem. Uh, Secretory platelet abnormalities can be divided into medications which can cause it, uremia, which uh, can cause qualitative platelet dysfunction, hypothermia as well, as well as storage pool diseases. Then under aggregative issues, medications again, fibrinogen disorders, and Glanzmann's thromboasthenia. So here we have about nine causes of qualitative platelet disorders on the left side of the algorithm. On the right-hand side of the algorithm, we will consider quantitative issues. Uh, if it's decreased production, it could be due to liver disease because there's diminished production of thrombopoietin, which as we know is a stimulant to the bone marrow to produce platelets. It could be due to, and these three should look familiar because they featured in our previous algorithm in pancytopenia. It could be due to marrow hypoplasia, ineffective uh, uh, you know, uh, thrombopoiesis or marrow infiltration, specifically with minor fibrosis or with malignancies, especially things like leukemia and lymphoma. Or your quantitative platelet defect, your thrombocytopenia could be due to increased platelet destruction, where we speak to hypersplenism. Then, of course, there's immune thrombocytopenic purpura, thrombotic microangiopathy. And remember, we said that there are nine causes of thrombotic microangiopathy. I'm sure if you can remember them, we said there's malignant hypertension, there's hemolytic uremic syndrome, there's valve hemolysis, and there's cavernous hemangiomas. And then we said that there's preeclampsia, TTP. Uh, scleroderma, disseminated carcinomatosis, and disseminated intravascular coagulation, all of them can cause thrombocytopenia. And then, of course, the infamous heparin induced thrombocytopenia. There's two types, type 1 and type 2. All right, so here in we have eight causes of quantitative platelet defects. Together, we're looking at 17 uh, possible etiologies of platelet disorders. All right, so that's a wrap of platelet disorders, and I hope that you have benefited from this. I just want to leave you with an acronym FOCUS. All right. Focus actually means follow one course until success. Follow one course until success. So if you're looking to achieve any goals or, you know, you're going to have focus to achieve those. Okay, God bless you and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Looking forward to seeing you in the next algorithm in internal medicine. Take care and good night.